What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can use components in order to cut holes with a little bit of depth in faces in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, and so what I was doing is I was looking at this photo and this is from the free picture website, Pexels. Um, I can link to it in the notes down below. It's a photo from Josh Hild. But in particular, what I was doing is I was looking at these openings right here in this wall and trying to figure out how you would create a component that kind of like simulates that depth. You know what I mean? And so what I want to do is I want to use the cut component functionality of SketchUp's components in order to do this. And so let's say that we've got a wall in here and we're going to assume this is maybe like 70 feet tall, something like this. And we're just going to draw like a hundred foot line in here and that's going the wrong direction. But we've basically got this surface in here, right? And we wanna start adding some windows. And so first off, I'm gonna create a guide in here that's gonna be like 14 feet high. That'll tell me where the um, bottom of the second floor is going to be. Then I'm assuming these windows are maybe gonna be like three foot six off the floor. And so what I wanna do is I wanna create a component that's going to cut an opening in this face and give us a little bit of depth that I can then copy in order to create multiple openings. And so one thing to note about this is this gets a little weird when this geometry is grouped. So um, you need to be make sure that you're dropping these cut components on top of raw geometry. But what we wanna do is we wanna start by roughing out the opening that we want this to create, right? So we're gonna assume this window is maybe gonna be, we'll say six feet tall, and we're gonna say it's four feet wide. And so all I'm doing is I'm roughing out this opening right here. Well, what I've done is I've drawn this on this surface. Well, we don't necessarily want that because th we want this to be kind of a standalone object that we can bring in here over and over again. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this object right click on it, I'm gonna click on the option for make component. And so notice how when I've drawn this on the surface, you can set this to glue to a surface. And so when you first set up this component, you can set up the glue to a surface and you can also set up the option for cut opening, right? So I've got this in here and note that this is only going to work this way if you do this on a non-group surface. We'll take a look at it on a group surface in a second and it's just not going to do what you want it to do. For now, we want this to be set to glue to a surface and you could set this to glue to just a vertical surface if you wanted to like this as well. If you don't want this like, uh, if, if you don't want this, um, gluing to like a floor or something like that. But we're gonna set this to cut opening. Or we're gonna click on create. And so when we do that, all that's really done is that's just created this simple component, right? And if I move it around like this, notice how it's not actually doing anything. So if I double click on it, notice how we've got this X right here that is showing us the front face of this object. And so what I wanna do is I wanna push pull this back to whatever the depth is that I want that recess to be. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna say that this recess is going to be six inches. I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so now what I wanna do, because right, we still don't have an opening in here. What I wanna do is I wanna delete this front surface, the one that's aligned with this X right here. Well, when I do that, Notice what that does is that actually comes in here and that cuts an opening in the surface so you th see through to the backside right here. And if you wanted to, you could delete that back surface as well. So now we've got kind of like this cutter in here. It's cutting this face. Well, one of the cool things about this is if we go over here into our components section of our tray, notice how this is our component one. Well, we can click on that and we can drop a new version of this in here. Well, remember, since these are versions of the same component, if you make a change in here, they're going to be reflected across these other objects as well. But what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to adjust these so that they actually have a window in them as well so that they look more realistic. And note that you can come in here and edit things about this component. We don't really want to worry about that for right now, other than we're going to change this to window so that it's named window. So now when we look for it in this list, it's easier to find. But now what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I want to start drawing or roughing out this window. And in this case, I'm gonna start working on this from the backside, right? I don't really wanna mess 
with the front side. So we're just gonna come in here, we're gonna take this back side and we're gonna offset this in so that we have our exterior window frame. And in this case, I'm gonna say that's going to be two inches wide. And then you can go ahead and delete out this surface. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push pull this forward and you wanna make sure you tap the control key so that you're actually in create new face mode. And in this case, I'm gonna say that this window has a depth of four inches. And I'm also gonna come in here and I'm gonna reverse these faces right here. So I'm gonna do a reverse so that they're facing the proper direction. But what we've done is we've come in here and we've generated a window frame. And just to kind of stay organized within this model, what we might do is we might take this whole thing, select it and make sure we haven't picked anything else up. And we may just group it for right now, um, just so that we don't have to deal with geometry merging or anything like that. But now what I wanna do is I want to just model out the frame of my window, right? And so we're just gonna assume this is like a sliding, um, I think it's a casement window. So it's just gonna be a window that slides up and down. So I'm just gonna offset this in by two inches. I'm gonna push pull this forward to right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the control key so I'm gonna create a new face mode. And then I'm just gonna draw a glass pane like this. So we'll just draw this glass pane and we'll just apply a glass material to this just so that we can see through it. So we're gonna go into our glass and mirrors and we'll go ahead and we'll use maybe the gray glass is what we'll use. But then I wanna take that and maybe I'll go into x-ray mode so I can see it a little better, but I wanna select all of that. And I just wanna make that a component. And we're just gonna call this um, window light like this. Then I can toggle this off and I just wanna create a copy of that. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy and move this forward so it aligns right here. So now what I've got is I've got this window that cuts an opening in a wall. Now there's two other things I wanna do with this. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add a sill. So I'm just gonna double click in here and I'm just going to model out a sill that looks like this. And so I'm gonna assume the sill is maybe gonna hang out, uh, we'll call it three inches. That might be a little far, but um, for what we're doing here, probably ought to be fine. And then we'll just say that it has a thickness of four inches. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of like roughing out the shape, but I'm just gonna push pull it out this way, maybe like three inches. And we'll do the same thing. We'll extrude this across right here. And then maybe another three inches like this. And then we're also going to assume that we've got maybe like a stone beam on the top of the window. And so for this one, what we can do is we're going to, we'll make it a little bit fancy. So we'll have this be three inches tall. We'll have this go out maybe three inches like this. But what I'm doing is I'm going to make this stone and give it kind of a triangular look like this. Then we're gonna push pull it out like this. And we'll say this is gonna extend out maybe like two inches or maybe an inch is probably plenty, actually. It might not even be that much, but um, visually speaking, that ought to work just fine. But now what we've got is we've got this component in here and we've got the cutting plane set to create our opening. And then we've also got all this extra geometry in here. Well, now the cool thing about this is if I make a copy and I say this is going to be like 11 feet high, Notice what that's gonna do is that's going to create a copy and then cut another opening. And then I'm gonna type in times four and hit the enter key in order to create four copies. And because these are cut components placed inside of just a raw face, what this is doing is this is going to cut an opening every single time that we create these windows. So say we've got a spacing of 20 feet right here, and then I'm gonna type in like a times four or something like that, or maybe a times three. Notice how every single one of these is cutting an opening in this face. Now, let's say that we had a face like this one over here, but it was in a group, right? So if I click on the group right here, and then I try to drop one of these windows in here, notice how it's not actually going to cut the opening. It does align with the face, fairly nicely, which is nice um, because our front axis is set to this point right here, but it's not actually cutting that opening because we haven't dropped it on a raw face. And so if you wanted a cut component to work inside of a grouped 
piece of geometry, you just wanna make sure that you double click in here and you just drop it on the raw face. As long as you're dropping a cut component on a no thickness raw face, it should come in here and it should cut on this face just fine. And so you can use this in order to quickly model out all of these different uh, window types and use them as like templates. And one of the other cool things about this is if I come in here and I try to make a change, right? So if I double click, let's say I wanted to apply some materials to these headers right here. So I'll go ahead and uh, you wanna be a little bit careful. Notice how I made that a group and then it kind of messed everything up. So we're not necessarily going to do that. I think if we group everything except that back face, we're probably, okay, nope, we're still not. So that is something to be aware of, is this front plane acts a little bit funky if you start modeling extra faces on top of it. So you just wanna be a little bit careful with that. But let's say that we wanted to add a stone, maybe like a sandstone to this. Well, notice how when I make a change to this, when I change one, it's going to change the others as well because they're copies of that same component. Okay, and so one other thing is, let's say that I had this single window in here and I wanted to also make like a double window, right? Well, what I could do is I could right click on this one and make it unique, meaning it would now be a different kind of component. Um, and we could just call this, instead of window one, we would call it double window, or I guess alphabetically it would be window dash double. But if I wanted to make this opening bigger, all I would have to do is just come in here and just push pull this phase out another four feet like this. And then I could go ahead and I could erase out this extra and the face that it creates like this. Notice how I'm able to make my opening bigger in here. And so it's still going to cut the opening in here, but then I could take this whole thing and I could just make a copy. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode and copy this across like this, but then all I would have to do is just kind of adjust some of this raw geometry, right? So if I move this across on the red axis till it aligns right here, and then I push pull this object out so it aligns right here, notice how now I have a double window in here as well. And so again, that's still gonna show up in my component browser, right? Window dash double, and it's still going to cut an opening, but in this case, these are just gonna be bigger windows. And then one other thing you could do is if you wanted all of these to align, you could just select them, go into your uh, component browser, right click, do a replace selected, and notice how you can use that in order to toggle out all of those windows, or uh, swap out those windows really quickly, just by doing this replace right here. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. I may continue this as more of a series with uh, different tips for creating some of these different conditions um, in a model like this. So leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course. I'll link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.